Hi, my name is Jan Richter Wortmann and I'm going to talk about Fiverr, robust verification of countermeasures against fault injections, which is a joint work with Ayn Rizai Shamizadi, Pascal Sastrich, Amir Moradi and Tim Geneso. And as implementations of cryptographic algorithms can be broken by active fault injection attacks, researchers came up with the Plessora of countermeasures. However, the verification process of such countermeasures is often a manual and error-prone task. And therefore, we propose a fault verification framework that works on a gate-level netlist in order to analyze countermeasures against fault injection attacks designed for FPGAs and ASICs. And to inject a fault in an ongoing encryption or decryption process, an attacker can use several techniques, which range from yeah, simple clock glitches or voltage glitches over more advanced techniques like using electromagnetic pulses or uh, the high energy from a laser beam. And as I mentioned before, there are different methods to protect a cryptographic implementation against fault injection attacks. And the most simple one is to use temporary redundancy and encrypt or decrypt the same input several times. A similar approach um, encrypts or decrypts the same input in parallel, which is done by spatial redundancy. More advanced techniques use linear error correcting codes, where the input is encoded and processed in an adapted version of the cryptographic um, algorithm. And finally, especially in the last three years, there were many um, dedicated countermeasures against CIFR proposed. And currently, um, the state-of-the-art tool to verify these fault countermeasures is Verfi, which is a, the first automated open source cryptographic fault diagnostic tool, which works on a gate-level netlist. And as input, you can pass the fault model to Verfi, which is basically, if you would like to inject um, bit flips or set or reset faults, then an adversary model, which contains the number of faults you would like to inject, then the location of fault and the target clock cycle, so you can really um, define a submodule which you would like to um, fault and, um, yeah, and the target clock cycle. And you have to define a set of input test vectors which are used um, for the verification. And as output you will get the total number of faults, the number of non-detected faults and the location of the effective faults and also the faulty outputs. But the problem is that you have to define the input test vectors, uh, that you have to define a set of input test vectors that are used for the evaluation. And as an example, let's consider um, the present SBOX, which is protected by a single parity bit. So at the top, we have the SBOX implementation S, and at the bottom, we have the redundant um, circuit S prime, which um, is used to um, compute the parity bit concurrently to the SBOX computation. And what you can see is um, this S-Box is not protected against single bit faults. So if you inject a fault, um, a single bit fault, the fault can propagate to two output bits. And if both output bits are toggled, the parity bit is not able to detect, uh, to detect this fault. And this is a problem um, in Verfi because Verfi can um, report false positives, um, and this is in this example. This happens when um, we inject the red set of input um, vectors. So if we inject the green one, so 045D, E, or F, where we can report or will report all single bit faults that can occur in the in the design. But if we select 1, 2, 3, 6, 7, 8, 9, A, B, or C, where we, or there is at least one non-detected single bit fault, which is not detected by Verfi, and Verfi would report, okay, your design is secure, you can use it, but at the end it's, um, it's wrong, there are um, test vectors where the design is not secure. And this is why we developed or proposed Fiverr which is short for fault injection verification. And our verification approach works, also works on a gate level netlist. And the gate level netlist is passed into a directed acyclic graph. And then we are working 
Now on the duct, we are working on BDDs, which are used to evaluate the circuit. And all this happens um, in an initialization phase. And after this initialization phase, we um, we go on with an evaluation phase where we use symbolic fault injection. And after a symbolic fault injection, we apply a diagnosis where we compare the golden, so the, um, the correct model, with the faulty model. And then we um, can report um, if the circuit is secure or not. Okay, so let's step through the diff um, different phases and steps here. So first, we will create a deck. So let's consider this circuit here. And first of all, we constrain our set of gates, which we um, which we support by fiber. So um, we have sequential gates, which are basically just registers. Then we have combinational gates, which are not end and end or nor x or and x nor gates. And then we unite all gates in a set G. Um, so G contains all valid sets, uh, all valid gates, which are supported by fiber. And then such a circuit can be translated into a duck. And first of all, we will introduce one single input node for each original input of the circuit. And also we will introduce an output node for each output. And then each gate um, is translated to a dedicated node. So for each OR gate, for example, we will have a node which um, is associated with an OR gate and so on. Okay, so this is... Um, um, yeah, very straightforward and a common way if you would like to build a model from a digital circuit. But then we will build BDDs for each node in our DAC. And what does it mean? So normally we have our DAC representation and now it's just a um, simple example here. So we have three inputs, x0, x1, and x2, and two gates, or the two end gates, and we will have an output y. And then we can represent um, this function by a simple truth table, or we can represent it by a BDD. And in this case, we will introduce one BDD variable for each input node, so x0, x1, and x2, and then the BDD looks as follows. So if we evaluate x0 and x0 is 0, we directly know, okay, the output of y will be 0, and we can directly jump to the output 0. But if x0 is 1, we have to evaluate x1, and then here's the same. If x1 is 0, we can jump to 0, but if x1 is 1, we have to evaluate x2, and then if x2 is 1 as well, we will jump to um, the final output 1. So this representation... Um, it's a BDD of the second end gate, and we will do this for every node in our DAC. So first we will start by introducing a BDD variable for each input node, and then we will go through the DAC and evaluate each node of the DAC. Okay, and then uh, we will go on with the evaluation phase. And first of all, how do we inject false. So, and here we are following a paper which we proposed um, also in this year where we revisited fault adversary models. And we say we can model a fault by replace a Boolean function. So in this case, let's consider we would like to inject a fault in this end gate here. And then we say, okay, our fault model, for example, um, considers that we exchange the end gate by an OR gate, by a set or by a reset fault. And then we will start by replacing the end gate with an OR gate. And by doing so, we have to re-evaluate all nodes that um, lie in the propagation path of the OR gate. So all the red nodes here. And this means we have to re-evaluate all BDDs. And at the end, this will result in a faulty duck D prime. Okay, but as I mentioned earlier, fiber should prevent false positive. And that means that we not only would like to evaluate fault injections over all possible or all valid um, input vectors, but also over all possible fault combinations that can occur in a given circuit. And to do so, we introduce a set lambda, and in the set lambda, we collect all um, nodes 
that are associated with a given location L. And by location L, we refer to sequential gates or combinational gates or both. And for this example, let's assume L is equal to C. That means our set lambda would contain all nodes from 7 to 14 and from 19 to 22. And of course, of, um, all nodes that um, will um, come after these um, last line of nodes will include it in lambda as well. Okay, so this is the first step. Then in the second step, we will divide lambda into different sets theta i's where each theta i contains all nodes from one specific logic stage. So in this example, we have two logic stage, stage 0 and stage 1, and that means theta 0 will contain the nodes 7 to 14, and theta 1 will contain the node 19 to 22. Okay, and then the next step is that we would like to incorporate the parameter n, which says how many false do we inject simultaneously in one logic stage? So we collect in gamma i's the valid combinations up to n. So in this example, let's consider n is equal to 2. Then we build two sets, uh, gamma 0 and gamma 1, which contains all valid pairs of nodes um, that are available in our circuit. So for example, for gamma 0, we have 7, 8, 7, 9, 7, 10, 7, 11, and 7, 12, and so on and so on. And for gamma 1, yeah, a similar, uh, similar combinations. Now, as I mentioned earlier, we inject false by replace, replacing a Boolean function. And we will cover all, um, yeah, all valid replacements here. So, for example, let's consider we would like to um, fault the OR and the AND gate at the top. Then we um, will look up the fault mapping. So we say the AND gate um, is allowed to or is mapped to an OR gate or to a set or reset fault. And the OR gate is, for example, mapped to an OR gate or a set and a reset fault. And all in all, this gives us nine different um, possibilities to inject a fault or nine different fault mappings, which are just has to be, uh, which are just have to be tested for um, this combination seven eight of the node seven and eight. And then our tool um, also supports univariate and multivariate fault injections. And yeah, if we just consider univariate fault injections, faults can solely inject it into one single gamma i. So we first will inject all possible faults in gamma 0 and then in gamma 1. So this is very straightforward. But this gets more complicated if we would like to analyze uh, multivariate fault injections. And here we say we can um, inject up to n faults in one single logic stage. So let's assume um, we would like to analyze bivariate fault injections, then we would be equal to 2, and we would um, inject two faults in the first logic stage and two faults in the second logic stage. Stage. So in total, we have two or uh, v times n nodes that are affected per fault injection. So in our example, four nodes. And this again increases the number of fault injection drastically. And as you see, not only the parameter v, but also, also the parameter n and the fault mapping will increase the number of valid fault combinations that need to be evaluated drastically. So therefore, we came up with two optimization strategies. And the first, the first optimization strategy exploits um, the optimization passes of each node, which is located in our fault model, in our duck. And um, here we do not re-evaluate the entire duck every time, so after every fault injection, but only the nodes which um, lie in the propagation pass of the fault node. And the second one is called complexity reduction. And here we reduce the initial set lambda, or we reduce the nodes in the initial set lambda. So, um, yes, yeah, so by ending up with a, um, with a lower set of faults which need to be evaluated. But more details can be found in the paper. Okay, and finally, we have the diagnosis. And here, 
we assume that we have our golden model um, from the duct D and our faulty model model um, of the duct D prime. And let's assume we inject a fault in the XOR gate here and inject a set fault. Then we have, um, or we could have two faulty output bits. And to check this, we introduce, um, yeah, some additional layer, let's say, which is um, where we do not really uh, introduce new deck nodes, but only BDDs are created. And we create X or BDDs between the outputs of the duck, of the golden duck and the faulty duck. And the nice thing um, when using BDDs is that we can check the outputs really efficiently. So we can um, count all satisfying variable assignments at the output over all possible input combinations. And as you can see, um, we have the same BDD variables for the golden duck and for the faulty duck, so in 0 to in, uh, in 6. So, um, yeah, we have the same input variables and therefore we consider the same input vectors. And therefore we can directly check for given fault injection over all possible input combinations if a fault is effective or not. Okay. And yeah, finally, we performed a few case studies for craft LED and AES. We consider detection and correction countermeasures, which are based on linear error correcting codes. Then we considered univariate and multivariate fault models. And we showed that the optimization strategy based on the complexity reduction is um, effective. And all our experiments were done on a Xeon E5 CPU with 3.2 gigahertz. Um, the machine was equipped with 128 gigabyte of RAM. We used eight threads for our tool, and each thread was allowed to use up to eight gigabyte of RAM. And maybe um, let's have a look on some numbers. So um, first, in the when we can when we evaluate a craft run round or run round craft design, um, we have 766 valid combinations here. We just used a bit flip model and injected one fault. And then our tool is very fast and can verify the design in under one second. Even um, if we inject two bit faults, um, we have 330,000 combinations and the tool just takes 1.5 seconds here. And this gets a little bit more complicated. So if we increase um, the circuit, so the countermeasure is now able to detect up to three bits and we inject three bits here, and we do not use any complexity reduction, then we have 90 million um, valid combinations, and these combinations can be checked in, uh, checked in roughly 3,000 seconds. And we are also able to analyze an entire AS128 round, which is equipped with a detection countermeasure. And the first, one, the first design is able to detect one bit um, or one um, bit false. And here we have yeah, 24,000, uh, roughly 25,000 combinations, which can be checked in 22 seconds. And if we increase the countermeasure um, such that the countermeasure is able to detect two faults, um, yeah, we have a huge number of combinations. So if we would not use any complexity reduction, there would be 300 million combinations. And yeah, we are not able to check um, this amount of combinations. Um, for such a large circuit. So you can see here, we can check a huge amount of um, combinations, but the circuit is smaller for the LED design, but the AES design is too large, so the program would not finish. But if we apply our complexity reduction, we just have 56 million combinations, and then yeah, our tool um, needs uh, 470,000 seconds. But it is possible to analyze or so to verify such a design. And if you are inter interested in our design, you can find it on GitHub, um, on our Chair for Security Engineering um, site, slash Fiverr. But of course, there are some limitations. So first of all, the circuit size. Um, as you could see, if you use large circuits, our tool is not able to pass um, the circuit and translate it into BDDs. So this is one drawback. But we are able to pass an entire AAS round. But for example, using two AES rounds would not be possible. 
Then the next thing is the fault model, which is um, yeah, a natural limitation, because if we increase n and v, yeah, we would have too many combinations that need to be checked, and then yeah, our tool would not be able to finish um, in an adequate time here. And finally, the circuit structure. Yeah, as we are using um, ducts as a model, as a circuit model, we are not able to pass circuits where we have a loop. So if you would like to use Fiverr and check a design, you first have to unroll the design and then you can um, pass it into our, um, into our data structure. Okay, and to wrap up, um, once again, here's um, our flow or tool flow, and we will our tool works on a gate level net list, and we will pass the gate level net list into a duck. Then the duck nodes are evaluated and BDDs are created, and then we can exhaustively check all possible fault combinations over all valid input vectors, and all these possible combinations are checked in our diagnosis step, and this gives us a tool which is really fast, so we can check 90 million fault injection for a single round of craft in under 50 minutes while testing all 2 to the power of 128 input assignments. So this is pretty impressive. Um, yes, thank you very much for um, listening to my talk and watching the video. Here you can see our references. And if you have any questions, do not hesitate to contact us. Um, and we will be happy to help you with the tool or to answer any questions. Thanks a lot.